Okay. All right, let's do it. So <clears throat> here's your session. Obviously, you sent it to me in really good shape, so that makes the whole process really nice and straightforward. All I've done since you sent it to me was to go through and just remove all of the other bypass plugins that were already in my template, just because I figured let's just start from the very beginning, start from scratch. So I've just taken okay. off all those. And then there were a couple of things, I think just vocals mainly, where you had tracks that were stereo tracks but they didn't need to be because it was just mono content so i've just made okay. so i've just made your what what were stereo vocals mono tracks in both, okay. both your lead and your bv uh, track stacks okay i don't think i've done anything else i think i've left everything else as is so that okay so that's all i've done really in in preparation for this okay uh, i i put a little bit of panning on those vocals but that that is not set in stone which, that was really just for which i've left so so all that okay. panning is still right. there so uh, okay. you know and we'll look through all of that as as we work through so wonderful uh, so that's all good now the one funny thing that i did notice is i mean i haven't looked through thoroughly but these kick uh, tracks that you've got here mm -hmm. um for whatever reason are not centered in the stereo image so if you solo out this analog kick you'll see that i think it's right side heavy oh it is okay which is weird right it um, is weird i don't know why but not to worry because the simplest way to solve that is just to sum the channel to mono it's the same on the boom track by the way just sum the channel okay. to mono make sure your plugins on it are mono uh and then it'll make those channels mono. Um, okay, great. And then you won't have the issue because it'll basically just take that left and right content, stick it all straight down the center anyway, and, and away you go. Okay. But just, I guess you just want to check your, on your original session, what you were doing with, uh, maybe you did something accidental with the, with the panning position, which is unlikely, or maybe there's something in whatever sample you're using or there, there could be okay. a number of places that that could have crept in, but just worth checking so you know where that's Yeah, absolutely. That, that was not deliberate. Okay. So, look, f f from there, the very first thing that I do, which I'm sure you've seen me talk about, is just a, a, a basic gain stage, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I just want to gain stage everything so that it is at a, a, a reasonably uniform level yeah mm -hmm. uh, and 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 all i do to do that is literally i set up a vu meter on my mix bus there mm -hmm. and i would solo one thing at a time and trim each thing with a gain plugin so that it's hitting around about zero db vu on the vu mm -hmm. meter uh, mm -hmm. and this vu meter is calibrated <clears throat> to minus 18 that's the headroom there. Mm -hmm. that, so, so that's what I do. So I just run through each thing one at a time. Uh, and I, so I'll show you a, a couple. And I just trim these things in. So you, you know, you don't you don't need to be too meticulous. It's just you know, you're just ballparking here, right? It's mm -hmm. so just getting things You know, so, so I'm not I'm not going to spend ages and ages over these things. I just literally run through them and you know dial them in quickly. I'd probably okay. actually go to the what was what would likely be the loudest section of the song. So I'll go okay. to okay. So you know, so that's all I do. So you know, I'll, I'll I'll do a few here. In fact, let's let's just run through the whole the whole lot. Why not? Now, something to be aware of with stuff that is just like high frequency content is it, it won't trigger a VU meter in the same way. Right. So, so anything that is just like short, sharp, transient and all in the high end. So like this mm -hmm. little clicky sort of bridge kick thing, hi-hats are the same, shakers, that those sorts of transient, heavy, short, high frequency percussion stuff, they, they won't trigger a VU meter in the same way. So, right. I actually, I've sort of noticed that in my in my travels with this so far. Yeah. So it's kind of it's yeah. You know. So you know, you just you just want to get get it to a healthy level, um, mm -hmm. that that you know is is going to be a good level to work at. But don't you know, don't worry too much about what your VU is doing. So you know, you can okay. do it do it in context against something else in your mix. You know, just sort of flick backwards and forwards between 
two parts, for example. So we could just grab these bits. You know, and as a balance, that that is fine for the time right. being, right? Okay. Now you've got a couple of tracks in here that you don't need, like this rack you don't need and this floor you don't need. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I will always, obviously, you know, you've got this template that you're starting from, but I will always try and get rid of any clutter that isn't necessary in the mix, just because okay. just because you don't want to be wondering about, oh, am I using that, am I not? You just want stuff in your session that is just what you're using, right? Absolutely. Um, so like your symbols bus, you haven't got any symbols channels, so that can go. Yeah, I, I didn't want to get rid of your buses just yet, but yeah. that's okay. Overheads bus, room, room bus, I'll keep just for the time being, just in case, just in case we want to do some sort of faux room emulation down the line a little bit. So, so we'll keep that and then we'll go back and we'll trim these other bits. Uh, cool. Now, to me, straight away, I don't know whether this is the case, but it, it sounds like there's stereo information in that actual track, like in, okay. in, in the sample being used. So, so you've got a stereo sample and then you've panned it further to the left as well. So, okay. so if I put this back central, we'll, we'll, we'll check the theory by seeing if, if these meters are still weighted to the left, we know that the sample is already in stereo, so to speak. Okay. And, and it is, right? Okay. okay, all right. Yeah, so, so what you so have- I can come back to the center. So what you, what you, you were basically panning something that was already- Already, panned okay. in, in the sample, right? Okay. Um, but just, but just as, a, as a point of reference, like you, if, you wanna, if you wanna pan something that is stereo, use a stereo pan, mm -hmm. yeah? So let's just change these tracks to stereo tracks. You might well have done that because I think my channel in the template was already panned, so you probably just stuck it on and then left it. Um, okay, which okay. Is, which is probably how it got there, I, I reckon. Yeah, okay. I mean, that is something when I export final tracks, I am being careful that everything goes back to center. So that could have been an error on my part or might have just been when I imported it. Who, who knows? No, no big deal either way. Okay. <laughs> And let's just check this as well to see if this is. Yeah, so we, we've already got some left. some content in there. So okay. So rather than going all the way out as you were, sort of 40, 45, let's kind of just split Halfway. split the difference for now. Okay. And, and then obviously when we build the mix, we'll we'll see how we feel about it. But with a stereo pan knob, yeah. And So just listen to all three of those percussion parts together just to feel if they've got a rough balance that's appropriate at the moment. Now that's interesting that that is very left-sided even though mm. it's, it's kind of got some stereo info going on there so we'll, we'll check that later on Okay, I see what's going on here, which I hadn't noticed. So all, all of these game plugins are all in dual mono at the moment. So, so rather than boosting the signal evenly, what they're actually doing- Is boosting just the left? It's boosting just the left, exactly. Wow. Uh, so I don't know if it's all of them, but certainly. Yeah, it probably is, crap. Some, some okay. of them. Okay, so let's go through and just Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's probably. No big deal. 
So I saved you absolutely zero time doing the game <laughs> staging. <laughs> well, we'll... <laughs> We'll never know. We'll never know. All right. All makes much more sense when you find what the issue is, isn't it? <laughs> so we can put that back where we had it panned now that now that we know that the issue isn't with the game. Okay. Exactly. So I have I have two. They're basically the exact same thing, but one's an octave higher, just because I thought we could kind of layer some of that top end of the ARP mm -hmm. on yeah, the yeah. denser one. Right. Yeah, and you, you can see I'm not being too meticulous about it. You know, this isn't sure. about spending ages and ages, you know, game right. stage everything to be absolutely bang on. This is just getting things in the right ballpark so that you know as you start running through running things through plugins you know it's coming through at a healthy signal level that, that sure. is at the optimum level for plugins okay do you, do you know about plugins having an optimum working level is that something you've come across um yes i have it, it doesn't make complete sense to me just yet um just that that like the amount that's going into the plugin is that kind of the idea like the amount of signal that's going into a plugin like you don't want to like you want to have the right level you want to have the right like gain stage basically before it goes into a plugin uh, yeah yeah so i mean plugins are designed to work optimally with a particular signal level coming in and mm -hmm. um and how much above or below that optimum signal level your input signal is will affect how well that plugin works and how well it sounds. Um, mm -hmm. And generally, the rule of thumb is that plugins are designed to work best at around minus eighteen dBVU. Right. Okay. That's, that, that's the long and short of it. You can, you know, you can read reams and reams of it online, but basically, that's what you need to know is that you know use 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 a, a healthy signal level to go in. It's pretty much right. It. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. The only thing that's really not making sense to me right now is what I mean, I, I would have picked deliberate gain values and I, I don't, I'm not quite sure if maybe if there's something in the transfer of the file to you, why, why you're now having to crank all of these gains on um, that, that doesn't really, I mean, I see it, I obviously see it right on the VU meter, what like that you're hitting zero, but I don't, I don't know that I would have picked those values like willy nilly. So I don't, I don't really know why you're having to gain so much more when I probably... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It... So so you see here, you've got this waveform box checked, right? Mm -hmm. That basically means that you're zoomed in on, on all of the waveforms. So um, what, what we're looking at is not actually the, the level of the waveform that's in there, right? Okay, right. If I uncheck it, your waveforms yeah. are all pretty shallow. They're all pretty quiet. Okay. So, okay. so, so that's why, effectively, what you've given me are, are tracks that are quite quiet, and so I'm bringing them back up to a more healthy level to, right. to work. Okay, out. that's okay. That, that's 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 all that's going on here, and you can adjust, you know, how much that waveform is is zoomed by clicking and holding on that slider, so that okay. you know, so that you're looking at a, a good, a healthy representation of it. Right. Um, okay. But that's you know that's that's what's happened here. That's, that's it. You know, another option that I could have done here is is to normalize the gain of every region, um, which is I, I did do that step. So maybe yeah, I don't know. Maybe it didn't maybe it didn't hold or something when it transferred over over to you. Well, well, no, I I think it has. But what you've what it okay. looks like you've done is to normalize the gain to qu quite a low level, whatever it whatever it was that you chose to normalize it to. It was probably minus eighteen. Yeah, could could well be. So you know, all, okay. All the levels in this project are all pretty consistent. You know, it's all consistently quite quiet. Quiet. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so which yeah, which is fine. Um, but you know, all we're doing now is just tr trying to kind of bring those things back up. But I guess okay. You know, next time you do you do an export of, of all your regions, you want to just try and make sure that um, they're at a, a healthier signal level. Okay. So I I would hedge for. Do you know if you if you um, normalized peak or loudness value so if you go I think the... I think it was it was peak right so so I would hedge for like minus 10 peak that's normally okay. that's normally a reasonable benchmark okay yeah okay. So, so so next time go for a minus 10 peak 
Um, and then we'll, you know, then we'll be able to judge how much closer okay. that is to where we're trying to get to. Okay. okay. About, okay. Blister touch, you lift me up on way, on way, on way. You know, they're, they're, they're all at a reasonably similar level. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll hedge for that Start because there. obviously we'll, we'll work from that later on. Cool. Okay. Okay. So we're done with the VE meter for now. I'll leave it there just in case, but bypassed. Right, so this is where stuff gets interesting, right? Because obviously everything that we've got right now is um, digital. Yeah, you've, you've recorded digitally, you know, the only analog thing you've used presumably is a microphone, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. And as I'm sure you've heard, there's, you know, all this kind of, debate about analog versus digital and what's better and well you know digital's really versatile but analog's got all the warmth and soul and character and you know and how do we get the best of both well um you know you you can do what what i have here in my home setup which is a kind of a hybrid system with i've got some analog outboard gear stuff and i run stuff through it but that's really expensive so Mm -hmm. the, the next best thing is to use something like the Waves NLS, which I suggested that you that you grab. Yep, yep, I grabbed it. So it comes in two parts, right? The first part is, in fact, I've got it here. Uh, let me show you in the Waves menu, though. So the first part is the bus setting, okay? Yep. It comes in a, in a bus and a channel option in mono and stereo. So the bus option... We're going to stick on our mix bus as a stereo instance. Okay. Okay. Now, what this has within it is three different emulations of real analog consoles. So, Spike, Mike, and Nevo are the, 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 the names of three uh, producers who whose consoles were used uh, to create this emulation. Okay. Spike is a kind of an SSL style emulation nevo is a need emulation and mike i forget mm. now I, I never use mike um okay. i pretty much will always go to the neve version because i love the way neve sounds and i actually think for this track neve will be really nice because neve is kind okay. of smooth and warm and and rich so i think that that's ex that, exactly that's what i'm going for okay. so so what what waves did with this plugin is they basically went to nevo's console and they captured the the character of both the the mix the mix bus which is what this kind of top section is as well as eight groups group sends and then also 96 individual channels or, which all live within this plugin right so okay. so what that means is that first of all we can stick our console on our mix bus i'm going to assign all of these groups to be Neve as well, just okay. for the sake of argument. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to call those the things that I have in my stacks. So I've got drums, I've got bass, oh. I've got, uh, what was next, keys, mm -hmm. uh, lead vocal, and BVs, yeah? Mm -hmm. yep. I think that's everything that we've got in this session. Yeah. Okay, and these other three groups I'm not going to use. Okay. Then what happens is I go to my drums, for example, and I say, right, on all of these drum channels, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I'm then going to put an instance of the NLS channel. Okay. Okay. Not the bus, but the channel. Okay. And uh, and I put put that on each channel, and the channel obviously looks a little bit different, but mm -hmm. but where I've already designated the console style for the group it will choose that console style for the channel in the plugin okay, okay. so you see how here the vca group is set to one drums yep right so if i change uh, group two to spike if i change this to group two you'll see that this whole channel will change to two spike okay right so these channels are being designated their their console type by the group yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all of my drums here are going to be in this first VCA group. Okay. But what you'll see is that as I pull up each of these individual channels, 
you'll see that they're all they've all got a different number. So Nevo one, two, three, etc. So we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what that basically has done is to assign the the first eight channel um, characters captures that Wave made to each of these different um, plugins. So every plugin okay. is going to sound very subtly different as it does on a real analog console. Wow. Okay. That's 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 the principle behind it. Okay. Okay. And we do exactly the same on our base. So we'll go to our base, and we'll choose the. Uh, waves NLS I just need to be careful because I've got different mono and stereo channels so I need to okay. do them one at a time uh, channel mono we go to two group two for the base mm -hmm. yeah and then this is two Okay, so you see this has gone to nine, this has gone to 10. Okay. This has gone to 11, 11. And, and so on. So, okay. so we're, we're first of all, literally just gonna just put those channels across everything in our session, right? That's, okay. the, that's the first thing that we're gonna do. <laughs> what you'll hear when we come to A, B, these on and off, is that there'll be a very subtle difference in the mix, simply because our mix is passing through this this sort of analog emulation. Okay. Um, it's not going to be anything wild or anything drastic, um, but it'll be you know just a very subtle difference. But what what all this enables us to do eventually is to drive information through the analog channels. So by pushing the signal through a bit more, mm -hmm. which will allow us to get a bit more analog color, richness, and then we can match that input and output so that we're kind of benefiting from analog emulation, but without adding any signal. And what, that's, okay. and, and what that's gonna do is just give us a much richer, nicer mix at the end of it. That's, okay. that's the idea anyway. Okay. Now, the reason, by the way, that I chose not to kind of uh, do a, a proper static mix before adding all these instances is just because these these plugins might change how I perceive my static mix very subtly. Okay. So I'm going to put on all this analog emulation, and then I'm going to go and you know build build our static mix. Great. Okay. Right. When I purchased this plugin, I just I opened it up after I bought it, and I went, "Yep, I'm going to let him explain this to me." <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, is, what is that? Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, so we're there. Everything is set up. Okay. Um, you you could, if you really wanted to, you know, you could you could put it on your effect sends and stuff as well, but that's in my mind that's pretty overkill because. Okay. Um, but you know, but you could do. Okay. Okay, so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build our static mix, right? So okay. I'm going to assume that chorus three is the loudest part of the song. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to bring the level of everything down. Okay. Um, you know, obviously I've listened to the track, but I'm not super familiar with it. So uh, yeah, absolutely. So That's what, fine. what this means is that, you know, I'm just coming at it with a real critical, fresh pair of ears so to speak yep um whereas obviously you know you knowing the song intimately and having written it you know you'll you'll be wanting to hear certain things that perhaps to my ear as the mixing engineer in this case you know doesn't doesn't make any difference to me so right right okay so here we go let's build a static mix so the first thing that i'd start with is my drums so i'm going to get a, a balance of my percussion and then um and then we'll build up from there so okay let's just put our kick at unity see what sort of level we're getting out of it and then we can adjust from there okay okay so we're around minus 9.2 on our kick so i reckon i want to i want to be peaking I think at around minus 10. 
there or thereabouts. So I'm just going to use information that I've got in front of me to do that. Yep. Good old math. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Okay, we've got these toms. Okay, that's, you know, that's approximately where I am with my drums, right? Um, and then, because I want to keep around about that minus 10 peak level, and this is where people kind of forget about, is that obviously mm -hmm. as, you're, as you're bringing these parts in, you, you, your levels are accumulating, right? Think, things, right? things add up and create a sum that is greater than their individual parts. So, right. so on my drum bus here, I'm at minus 5.5. So okay. I'm just going to keep myself at minus 10 by trimming that on the bus. Or, okay. you know, or I could, if I wanted to do it with a gain plugin, maybe that's, you know, a slightly better way to do it, but it makes no difference really. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, yep. so I'll be at minus 10 here. Which I guess is where the wood block starts coming in where it gets a little yeah. pokey. Yeah? Yeah. Cool, okay, that's drums. Now, vocal is obviously the most important thing after that, so I'm gonna bring in my lead vocal next, yeah? Mm-hmm. And, and this is something that people get wrong a lot is that they build their whole instrumental first and then they bring their lead vocal in at the end and and then to get the vocal to be heard it, it ends up often sounding like it's just kind of plonked on the top whereas you know your vocal is your most important thing right so you need it in the mix mm -hmm. at the beginning and then you bring in things around that that, okay. That that that's what I consider to be a, a better way of of doing it, at least. Well, that makes sense. There's there's good logic behind that. I think so. Anyway, I think so. Yeah. Um. Cool. So I go for bass next. Okay. Obviously, I've missed out the sub bass and the other bridge beat, but we'll go back to that once we've got everything else built in because they're just in in the in the bridge here, aren't they? Keys. Okay, so what would you say are the most important keys parts that you've got? Uh, probably. Well, the, I, the piano really, I think, was just for just some depth in the sound mm -hmm. um it, that the vintage piano is probably a little bit more important in the verses and in, in that intro and at, at the outro you can yeah. see i just have the piano in the choruses that's probably for a little bit more meat i would say that arpeggio that arpeggio or arpeggiator is probably mm -hmm. is probably more important cool okay and then it, yeah, yeah, a lot of the other stuff is probably more effect based that xylophone is going to give like kind of like the sparkly high end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, okay.
So then, you know, stuff like your pads, yeah. As mm -hmm. I as I bring that in, I, I don't want I don't want to hear it. Like I want it to be there, but I don't want to notice it. It's it's a pad. It's not it's not important. It's texture. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so when I brought that in, it's not like I'm going right. I need to hear it. I'm just going. If I mute it, am I aware that it's not there? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So. Now, now this one, this one could get quite intrusive quite quickly because it's got quite a lot of energy. So, yep. so I just be cautious about where I place that in the context. So that's okay. what I'm doing here. Okay, whilst we're looking at these BVs, what, what I love to do with BVs, particularly when you've got them as you have in, in effectively stereo pairs, right, double tracked, mm -hmm. is, yeah, exactly as you have, left and right them, but I will go wider with my stereo image. Okay. So, so you know, you, you could be really drastic and go hard left and hard right if you wanted to, and that, okay. and that will work really nicely. Because it will give you real width, okay, right? Or you could uh, you could try and uh, another technique that I use often is to position that the lower harmony is closer to center, and as they get higher, move them further further out to the okay. extremes. So, so, okay. So these ones, I think, you're yeah. Lower. I did actually. I, I did want to clarify. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, I, I did want to clarify that with you because, because um, uh, probably in, in my travels, I, I, I think I had probably heard opposite, like higher, closer, and then as it gets lower, going a little bit wider. But I actually, when I was doing another demo after hearing you say lower, closer, I did actually find that that, that created something interesting. So, um, I mean, I, I prefer it that way because, to my mind, it makes sense to have the lower content in the center because in your mix you'd always focus the lower content in the center your kick your bass you know they're down the middle yeah. of your mix um yeah that's an interesting point and in in a choir i mean i'm not a, i'm not a choir guy you probably know from church but um i wouldn't imagine that you'd stick your your basses like right out on one extreme of your choir because then you've, you your whole kind of 
balance. It's very true. They're usually they're usually in the middle. Right. So yeah. So so you know I'm kind of just thinking in that sense logically about it and saying okay keep lower sounds in the middle and then higher sounds can go a bit wider and a bit wider. I love it. Makes sense. Right, so these, these top two I'm going to leave all the way out. These okay. kind of middle ones I'm going to put like middly out. Technical turn that. And then, your, <laughs> low, and then your, your low ones I'm going to leave a bit out. Uh, and then okay. these, these kind of uh, extra distant mm -hmm. ones, distant to me means they can be out. So I'm going to leave those hard out as well. That's fine. Um, you know, none of this is set in stone. So, you know, always we can do and review uh, so let's just see where we get to with that. So we've got high ones again, so let's get that wide. And then have we got more middly ones? Sorry, lost you. I got you back. Cool. Uh, okay, we've got... got these last couple here that's weird that they're misbehaving Okay, now something else that I like to do is, you know, once I think I've got a, a decent balance of parts, I'll, I'll group all of these faders so that I can't accidentally skew up my balance. Okay. So I select them all, I go to my groups menu here, hit new group, it'll pop up over here. I'm gonna call it BVs. And then in the groups menu, I'm just gonna have just checked the volume. Okay. So, so what that means is if I adjust the volume on one, it adjusts it on all. Cool. Yeah, but it still means that I've mm -hmm. got independent control over everything else on there. So, you know, if I, okay. so if I checked mute and solo as well, then if I mute one, it'll mute them all. Yeah. So, oh, I see. So you, okay. you can specify what you want the group to have control over, over there, okay. over there in the groups menu. Okay. Uh, but I haven't put in this last little one because this is your ending accent, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, and that kind of takes that kind of takes the place of where a lead would be. So that's why I kind of was like, I, I don't know, is it a background vocal? Is it a sort of go with the lead? I, I, I would treat it as a lead, you know? I, okay, all right. I, I would treat it as a lead. So I'd, okay, very good. So I'd stick it there. Uh, and as you've probably seen from my content, I'm obsessed. I love it. <laughs> just like, just keep yourself organized. Like it takes no time yeah. and it means you know what's going on. It, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, okay, so then we just had these two little bits in the bridge to go and check. So we're gonna check this bridge beat here. Might be too quiet, but you know we can always come back to it. And the other thing that we didn't yet touch was 
Oh, the vintage piano. So that's the the verse. Okay. The verse. Yeah, that's in a verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and, and now we've got a static mix. Yeah, great. Right? Now, just to have a little look at if this NLS is doing anything for us yet, mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to select everything in our project, and let's just bypass everything. And you'll notice how, you know, I, I like to try and keep similar products in the same slot, because, you know, like this NLS, there, it's all in slot two, so that if I want to bypass it all and hear the difference it's making, I can. Whereas if you've got some in slot two, some in, some in slot three, so you know you can't you can't just turn um, them all okay. on and off in one go. Yeah. Um, so here is with it all off. I mean, it, it's subtle, but it's it's already making it sound richer, warmer, smoother. You know, and we haven't we haven't done anything. We've just, we've literally just, right, we've right. just we've just put it on. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, if if we were to you know just just push this a bit, just so we're on the uh, on your mix bus here, uh, let's just push the whole mix a bit. You know, it's, it's it's just it's just really nice, and yeah. and it's it's really difficult to mess up a mix with this plugin, because okay. because it you know it's it's quite gentle really. I mean, if you know if you if you went to an individual channel and stuck it on, uh, you know, let's take this BV here. If you stuck it on mic setting, then it'll start distorting. You know, which which might be a cool effect, uh, you know, at some point, yeah. but. Um, but you know, generally speaking, you know, you can you can drive the hell out of it, and it's it's not it's not going to mess up your mix, you know. So it's 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 hard to get it really wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, but you know, the the way the way to use this is, you know, just to go through and keep an eye on your meter and just think, right, you know, how much do I want to trim this in? You know, and just just you know put put in as much boost as you like it and all it's going to do is just very gently just saturate it a bit um, okay that's that's all right i'm going to stick these all back to kind of unity for now and okay uh, and that and that's basically where where we are you know so look yeah that's that's kind of boring and it's basic but no that, it's that, not boring at what, all actually what, it's yeah what, what it means we've done is in in the space of an hour we've got a mix that works now. Absolutely. And, and and now, rather than constantly fighting ourselves to think, you know, am I am I making something too loud? Am I making it sound better? You, you, every move that you do from this point, you can always do in the context of a balanced mix. So, mm -hmm. you know, so if you go to your lead vocal and you chuck on, you know, a bunch of compressors, you know, so, all right, so let's, let's, um, uh, let's use something that I, use all the time just because it's easy um so here's uh this is slate digital um virtual mix rack so so, okay. so i will very often use uh serial 
compressors. So I might use an 1176 and then a, and then a 2A, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go uh, fastest attack, fastest release. So this I'm just gonna to use to try and grab some transients. You that pierced your side brings me to my knees. I sit with starstruck eyes. With just a touch, you lift me. Yeah, gain stage, always gain stage, right? So I just trim that back down by ear. You that pierced your side brings me to my knees. I sit with starstruck eyes With just a touch you lift me up on waves On waves of blood and water On waves, on waves of blood and water You that pierced your side Brings me to my knees Right, so I've dialed in some wow. compression super quickly. Mm -hmm. I haven't made the overall channel any louder. Obviously, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I haven't looked at it in great detail. I've done it really quick, but you know, but but because I've done it in the context of a mix that's already balanced, I can straight away assess are those comp compression moves that I've done good? Are they helping that vocal or not? And and the answer is yeah. Like I can hear the consistency in that lead vocal Absolutely. straight away now. You know, so. By, yeah. by having a good static mix, a good balance point to start from, like everything else you do is is then like a million times easier because because you've yeah. got a good you've got a good context for it. Yeah, as That's I've watched your content, that a buddy of mine and I have just kind of like poured into it, and a lot of times we'll watch this stuff together and just sort of discuss it. He does a lot of live mixing mm. um, for a church, but you know some of these same principles obviously apply, yeah, and yeah. it's. The, the gain staging thing just like really blew our minds. It, it just, I really have not heard anybody else talk about that and it just makes such perfect sense. And, and as I say in my content, it's because it's boring, right? It's because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's not glamorous. Like ev every other content producer online, I won't name names, but you know, ev sure. everyone else, they give you like a token, yeah, gain stage. Don't forget to gain stage. But like they don't talk about it and its importance and demonstrate why it's so valuable. Um, and, and if like if people just understood the fundamentals of it, then they go, oh right, yeah, okay, now I get why it's important, and then and then they see how beneficial it is to everything else that they do, and it's like right, I gotcha, and then it's like yeah, gain stage, gain stage, because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just the backbone. It's you know, it's just yeah, it's just what yeah. makes the makes makes the mix so much easier.